हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत पते गोपेश गोपीकांत राधा कांत नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसते देवी चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गणाधर शिव सदि भक्त हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 भक्ति वेदान नारायण गोस्वामी महाराज की सिमिलरली टू माय शिक्षा गुरुदेव मिथिला कृष्ण विष्णुपाल शिष्य भक्ति विज्ञान श्री भारती गोस्वामी महाराज कृषि भक्ति वेदान वामन गोस्वामी महाराज एंड श्री भक्ति राम प्रेतम गोस्वामी महाराज माय हंबल ओबिसेंसेस टू द फाउंडर ऑफ कोडिया मठ श्री भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर प्रभु पाल to his prominent disciples the guardian of devotion shishman bhakti raksha shridhar goswami maharaj right and to priti ratna shishman bhakti pragyan keshav goswami maharaj right to volcanic energy shishman bhakti dai madhav goswami maharaj and one who did a miracle and made everyone dance in the whole world in the whole universe the most worshipable shishman bhakti vedan swami maharaj ka kripa hai hum bol obeisance to shri chatane mahaprabhu to all his divine associates and all parikars along with shri shri radha govindi sar seva shri jagannath prabhu subhadra subhashan chakshi my pranams to all the vishnus and vishnavis and my seniors here and disciples of shri bhakti dan swami prabhupad whose presence is so hmm, is making this assembly a divine assembly so such a special occasion appearance of our shri guru dev every year every year in india and europe huh? wanted to start eight in the morning <laughs> yeah i was speaking to india and then i was speaking in europe and now here in new world so shri guru dev this is the introduction born 1921 the village tiwari for that state of bihar very near to that place where 
श्री रामचंद्र ताड़का श्री गुरुदेव बॉर्न ऑन मॉनी अमावस्या मॉन मॉन मीन्स वॉक साइलेंस वेर लॉर्ड वेर महादेव शिव सींग दैट हाउ सती हिज कॉन्सर्ट गिव अप हर लाइफ एंड महादेव बिकेम मॉन मॉन मीन्स साइलेंस and on that divine day a great personality who came from spiritual world she bolo the name sent by shri radha rani she will explain the meaning of maun maun means silence but in the definition of bhakti siddhan saraswati prabhupad Mono means one who always speaks. The glories of the name, form, qualities, and pastimes of Krishna. That is the meaning of mono. And we see Shri Guruji. He was always mono. Mono means always speaking. The glories of Krishna. The glories of Ram. The glories of Ma. When Gurudev used to speak the glories of means the past tense of Ram, he goes on and on and on and hours and hours and hours. He don't want he don't want it to get stopped by any of his sevak. He gets so annoyed and irritated. If someone is stopping him speaking Ram, and similarly, here in New Bridge and many other places, Gurudev used to speak the glories of Bridge Ram. Vrindavan sweet pastimes to give us another level of understanding. Sakal jagat kare mori vedi bhakti, vedi bhakti te prajbhav pai te nahi shakti. Chetan Chetamin Krishna Das Kavir Kaviraj Goswami saying, everywhere, everyone in the world, they worship me with a mood of opulence vedi bhakti but with vedi bhakti you cannot get braj bhav braj bhav pai te nahi shakti vedi bhakti cannot give you braj bhav what can give braj bhav raganuga bhakti and what is the meaning of raganuga bhakti following the footsteps of ragatmik bhaktas is called raganuga bhakti रागात्मिका अनुस्मृत्या साचा रागनुगा उच्चते फॉलोइंग द फुटस्टेप्स ऑफ रागात्मिक हुज रागात्मिक इष्टे स्वास की रागम परम पुरुष तद भवे तन्मय भवे भक्ति स रागात्मिका उच्चते रूप उष्णम भक्त सामी से दूर इष्टे स्वास की रागम दो सु है दो सु है स्पॉन्टेनियस लव For Krishna, we are associates of Krishna. Spontaneous love, then ragatmika bhaktas, and following the footsteps of ragatmika bhaktar, ragamugas. And Gurudev always used to say from the beginning, 1994, how to attain this ragamuga bhakti with any sadhan? No. Only one price. Lollyam. Tatr lollyam moolam ekam. जन्म कोटि सुकृत नगम कृष्ण भक्ति रसभावी That was Shri Guruji's preaching and his teachings. Read. So today is the parents' day, Mani Amavasya. He born in Mani Amavasya, and not only him observed this vow of silence, means being talkative all the time, but he made everyone talkative. 
He trained everyone, inspired everyone to speak Krishna Katha. That's the best service. And not in that regard, not only sannyasis, brahmacharis, one plus one plus plus everyone. In other words, <laughs> he didn't spare anyone. All boys and girls, even young ones. That's the beauty and the glories of Srila Gurudev. He made everyone speak wonderful, beautiful Harikatha. We go around the world, you see so many devotees everywhere. They can speak such wonderful Gaudiya Siddhanta, Gaudiya philosophy Harikatha. This is the glories of our Gurudev. And that's why today in the this assembly and also followed by evening assembly, we are going to ask, call upon devotees. They can offer their hearts and pushpanjali to glorify Guru Day, to purify everyone by the remembering Guru Day. So, first of all, I invite this Hamsakati Prabhu here. Hamsakati Prabhu? Oh, I just like him. Okay, he will take a while to come. So, then uh, first of all, start with ladies first. And I want to invite Rana Priya Devi to speak how this is going to be. Thank you. It's better come. So, first of all, I'd like to offer my heartfelt Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my beloved spiritual master, my Guru Parampara, Maharaji, my Vaishnavas. Uh, please forgive me. <laughs> I'm less than zero qualification to say anything, but Gurudev didn't really accept that excuse, and he would give these opportunities to, for our purification, my purification. Sometimes someone questioned Gurudev, he was giving Harinam initiation so freely, and someone questioned him, some of these People aren't, they haven't even given up like cigarettes or beauty. They're still, they're not practicing very strictly. And Guru said, how will they give these things up unless I give them? Mm. So it's not that first we're qualified and then we do something. <laughs> Hopefully try and then Guru, by Guru's mercy, maybe something can come. Um, Guru's. These, this today is Srila Gurudev's auspicious appearance day, but Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, like meeting and separation, they stand side by side. So it, it's his appearance day. His appearance day was weeks ago, but we're feeling there's some also some separation today. And Saraswati Thakur also said that this some realization of this separation mood is the goal of our sadhan bhajan. Um, I was remembering how merciful Srila Gurudev was. It's inconceivable, the love and affection he had for us. He would, if any disciple was having some distress, he would, wouldn't sleep. He would weep for that person. He told me once, he's like, don't Please don't be worried or I will worry. He's had so much concern for all his 
disciples, not just not just us, the living, all the living entities. He told us to do the right now sacred return to the trees here. One time during a festival many years ago, my dear friend Lolita, this was her house before, and we would stay here during the festival. And when, during the festival, Lolita's like a whirlwind, doing like a hundred services all at the same time. But she forgot one day to water some of the flowers. And Gertie noticed, he saw they were like a little bit wilted, and he told her, please don't forget to water them. They also want to serve. And he was always hyper aware and conscious of how to, how to use everyone, everything, in service of his Guru um, one time in Shukidarabhu, he asked Gurudev, what is the best way, quickest, easiest way to please Sri Hari Guru Vaishnav? And Gurudev said, by loyalty. He said, this, especially loyalty to Guru, he's like, this is this will bring everything. And he gave, and Gurudev said, can you explain what does loyalty mean? And Gurudev said, Shobhaktivino Thakur, he gave the perfect example, Sarvasta Tomar, Jarane Sampi. I don't, I don't know very many things, I don't, by heart, I mean, my memory is terrible, but basically this bhajan, it's saying, I, after offering everything to you, surrendering everything, and being prostrate, tied up at your at your house, you are my master. Please make me like your dog. This and Gurudev said this mood, this kind of loyalty. Gurudev said one time in Los Angeles. Also, he was telling devotees, he's like, I will give you Krishna. I will give you Krishna bhakti. Bring you to Krishna. Just give me this loyalty. And other. Uh, I mean, I have no realization of what this loyalty is, but I know Gurudev was very concerned that all the conceptions and very important points of our Guru Parampara were preserved. He told us on his Yas Puja in Hawaii, he told us, he said, learn, he begged, please learn my heart he taught or it will be lost. And Further on in that verse, that song by Bhakti no Thakur, it talks about the as as our we are so dependent on our master, our Guru Dave. He we just survive on remnants that are his remnants that are distributed to us. And Guru Dave also used to say these remnants are like the Harikata. So we are dependent. Our life is dependent on these remnants. So like when Maharaji comes or different Vaishnavas, it's like they're sprinkling our Gurudev's remnants. This is how we survive. Anyways, I'm very foolish. Please forgive my rambling. I pray that by some, by some causeless mercy, some chance, this loyalty, this nishta can come to my heart and inconceivable. But nonetheless, I pray, please, we need a chair. Can you get a chair for you? Yeah. 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 On this very auspicious day of Sri Guru's appearance, we're so fortunate to have so many of us dear devotees here. And uh, if they, their hearts 
always feel feel good about it. Everything is around feel good about it. And that's a, a great society that can have such a wonderful pure devotee, the great Mahabharat. Um, I'd like to read a short piece that I found with Shamarani Didi made a talk. She made a speech about her relationship with Guru and about the significant aspects of Shiva Guru. Today is a very auspicious occasion for we are celebrating the disappearance day. I, it's the appearance day of Shiva Guru Day. But we've learned that there's no difference. Pujapad, Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj. It is an offense not to observe the appearance and disappearance days of our Guru Vargas to our utmost capacity. Glorifying Vaishnavas on these days is our true wealth because doing so engages us in remembering them. The result of remembering Vaishnavas. Regarding the glorification of Vaishnavas, Srimad Bhagavatam 12, 1255 mentions Asmiti Krishna Padara Vindeo Shunoti Adabhani Char Shantanoti Satvasya Surim Paramatma Bhaktim Gyanam Chavigyanam Vairagya Yuktam Viraga Yuktam the remembrance of Sri Krishna's lotus feet, in other words, the remembrance of the dear devotees of the Lord who have taken full shelter at his lotus feet, destroys all auspi inauspiciousness and increases auspiciousness. When one's heart is purified, bhakti to the Supreme Soul is awakened and one first attains jnana, knowledge, then vijnana, realization, endowed with renunciation. Here, Avishmriti, Krishna Padara of India, not only means remembering the lotus feet of Krishna, but also remembering the devotees of Krishna. It means to deeply contemplate their conduct and teachings. By this, Kshinoti Adrabhani Chasham Tanoti, inauspiciousness is destroyed and auspiciousness is increased. It is not worldly or ordinary auspiciousness that is implied here, but rather the auspicious nature, desire for Krishna Prema to be awakened within the heart of the jiva. After this auspiciousness is awakened, then sattvasya shudem, the consciousness is completely purified. This is followed by paramatma bhakti, the appearance of a strong desire to serve Bhagavan. After this jnana, the knowledge about oneself, one's eternal position, one's relationship with Guru, and one's relationship with Bhagavan manifests clearly. This takes place not on a platform of sentiment or emotion, but on that of pure transcendence. When a disciple practices according to the teachings of his Guru, then Krishna transforms into vijnana realization, and after that, vairagya renunciation arises in his heart. The word vairagya has two meanings. Secondary common meaning is a detachment from the material world. Such detachment is but a product of the primary, deeper meaning of the word, which is vishesha rupena rag, or special attachment here. Special attachment indicates an attachment to the lotus feet of Bhagavan. Although we somehow came in contact with devotees due to our previous sukriti, we remain ensnared by many different obstacles of which three are most prominent. Kanak, both Kamini, women, and Pratish, fame and distinction. One can somehow or other escape the desire for Kanak and Kamini relative ease, but to become free from the desire for Pratishta is very difficult. Well, um, certainly it's important to absorb ourselves in the Shastras and the teachings of the 
pure devotees of the Lord. And uh, conditioning after a long life of trying to wreak out a living and an enjoyment in the, away from the direct association of devotees. It can uh, make a bigger obstacle that we have to overcome. And I feel very blessed by the association of the devotees here. It's, they don't hesitate to say, Hari Bo, Radhe Radhe, Jai Nitai Gaur, Jai Maharaj, Jai Vaishnav Rindiki. Um, the last time we were with Srila Gurudev in the Rose Temple in Venice Beach, it was his last trip of preaching to America. And I, I felt, <laughs> I have to grab his feet. I was sitting near the Vyasa, Vyasa Center. And I didn't, but he, he was kind enough to let me sit there. And uh, then uh, ultimately we, you know, that's the sad part. We followed him to the airport. And now there was something good there. People saw him and they were quite impressed by the solemnity, solemnity, the peacefulness of the, of the devotees. They were singing, but there, there was a sadness within their hearts and all of us. And uh, a little incident, I can say it was Srila Gurudev's last initiation in L.A. Jagdish Guru Maharati. He, he brought his friend Bart from uh, Bart came from Pasadena where Jagdish used to bring Prashad to him and so forth and keep nurturing his death. And Bart had talked uh, sometimes Jai she asked him, would you like to take initiation? And he just didn't feel like the devoted certain what sannyasis who were around Watsika Avenue or that. He, he wasn't attracted to the devotees to that degree. And so he, Jai uh, told him, take it now. This is your last chance. Mm -hmm. Ask actually for the whole day. And Bart bowed down before we were dead. And uh, asked him, please, please, please give me the holy names. And the Guru said, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Um, and then Shri Guru told him his, his name, spiritual initiation. And every we thought maybe Bharat, Bharat Rama. <laughs> said, your name is Vanamali. Wow. And then everybody, wow. It was like it opened up the cloud of mercy. Mm. And, you know, and Srila Gurudev went to bless every other place, every night. No doubt, airplane full of people, airports full of people, highways full of cars, temple with many affectionate devotees, just uh, wishing to you know, lay down and grab his ankles, grab his feet, lotus feet. Uh, these are my conjectures, just to let uh, we can imagine, because Guru Dev was uh, unlimitedly merciful, he would, he'd be confronted for not following certain regulations, and he would just melt them, melt anybody with his, uh, yes, I, I follow, uh, I follow Krishna. 
and make you soften everybody's heart that way. Uh, uh, it, it, this little, uh, it reminds this memory may be enhanced by further continuing to read all the notices about Sri Gurudev's past times, wherever they may be, whether it's in books or from the lips of the devotees or from uh, the internet. It's quick, quick letters. By Krishna's grace, Maharaj trying to catch me up in the long, long ago he, he, he invited me to be sannyas and I could, I could see myself as a sannyas uh, preaching and he's kind of limited and kindly he said uh, I can be a babaji Hamsagati babaji maharaj manja alpa to the bench Okay, so now we invite Nanda Gopal Prabhu, the boss, to please glorify the He has so much association with Gurudev and so many personal instructions and brings so much seva. Administration, preaching, in fresco. Something went wrong. Please try again. <laughs> Your Siri is open. <laughs> you can keep on chair. Brandasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chakshul Mitam Jaina, Tasma Esi Gurve, Gurve Gorachandaya Radikaya Tadalaya, Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya, Tadabhaktaya Namavisham. Sachi Pujamatra Surupan, Rupam Tasrajur, Puramator and Ghost of a Tin, Radha Kundam Giri Vadam, Aho Radika Madalsham, Prakto Yasha Kapita Kripaya, Sigurun Tam Matos me, Vevas me, Vevas me, Najiva me, Twaya Vina, Titi Vijan Brahe, Tom Nayanam, Charnam Tike. Rinde namaste charanar vindam Rinde namaste charanar vindam Rinde namaste charanar vindam Rinde namaste charanar vindam Mancha kalpa trivyas cha kipa sindhu bieva cha Patitanam bhavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo Si Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Si Advaita Gartha Shivasati Gorama Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Rama Offer my humble Dandavat thousands and thousands of times unto the lotus feet of my Pararajatam Rupa Padma Ashtatara Satasi Simad Srila Bhakti Vinata Narayan Goswami Maharaj Srila Gurudev especially on this most auspicious day of his divine appearance in this mortal world I'll 
helps a lot for my respectful obeisance to the same unto the divine lotus feet of their divine graces, my Shiksha Gurus, Ashtatara Sattva Sisi Mad, Shila Bhakti Vedanta Trivakram Maharaj, Shila Bhakti Vedanta Vana Goswami Maharaj, and to his divine grace, Ashtatara Sattva Sisi Mad, Shila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj, Shila Prabhupada, and all of our esteemed uh, Rupanuga Guru Varga, also to Shripad, Bhaktivedanta Siddhanti Maharaj, and all senior Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, disciples of Srila Prabhupada, disciples of Srila Bhakti Pragan, Bhakti Pragan Bharti Maharaj, Srila <clears throat> Gorgobinda Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, and so many. Time is short, so difficult to name everyone, but needless to say that our whole line coming from Sri Krishna himself are all equally worshipable. And especially our gurus, the one who have, ones who have personally uplifted us from this ocean of misery are so dear to us. They have the power to help us become free from this entanglement of birth and death. So this is a very, very special week. We had the great fortune of Maharaj being here with us. Very lucky to get this association here at New Braj of traveling preachers dedicated to this mission, serving Sri Gurudev and our whole Rupanuga line. And also so close to Srila Gurudev. There's some magic involved here. One time I heard Srila Gurudev said, you know, magic is being performed. And it also seems very magical that Srila Shiva Kramaraj would appear so closely to Srila Gurudev. Also when Srila Gurudev was leaving, <clears throat> also then Srila Bhaktivedanta Danta Bhaman Maharaj is appearing. It's described when Srila Gurudev first left his home and went to Navadweep to meet with Srila Bhakti Pragan Keshav Maharaj. Jai Srila Bhakti Pragan Keshav Maharaj Ki. Srila Gurudev had been writing letters back and forth, but it was never, he never said, oh, now I'm coming. So he just came, and in the dead of night, you can imagine, you've all been to Navadweep Parikram, Prajmanda Parikram. You know what it's like there, especially at night. But imagine like 50, 60, 70 years ago, black as night. Blackout. Blackout. <laughs> and when Gurudev arrived, he thought, oh, now what will I do? Where will I go? <laughs> but then he heard, T-R-E-G, T-R-E-G. And one personality was there with a lantern, and he was calling it T-R-E-G. That's Gurudev's family name, coming from the family of two Arijis. Mm -hmm. And that was, at that time, Sajak Sevan Maharaj, our Brahmacharya. And he, he called Gurudev and he came over and he goes, oh, very good, you've arrived. Now we will go back to the mud. And Gurudev said, how you knew <laughs> I was here? He said, oh, my Guru Maharaj told me you're coming. Go wait for him. Very mar miraculous, mm -hmm. magic. So then, when Gurudev came, Shiva Keshwar Maharaj, he put him under the care of who? Radhanath Brahmachari. Shri Lachiva Kram Maharaj. So just a few days ago uh, was his appearance day. And, you know, just as Ananta Shesha with his thousands and thousands of hoods and his thousands and thousands of mouths, he can never describe the glories completely of Krishna. In the same way, we can actually never complete the glories of our Guru Varga, of our Guru Devs. But I thought I wanted to, there wasn't time or a chance, I wanted to just give a few glorifications of Shiva Trivikram Maharaj, Maharaj in relation to our Shiva Guru Dev. Because how can you glorify one without the other? They're all so 
uh, divinely infant interconnected. Srila Gurudev or Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Srila Tripakar Maharaj and Srila Bhaman Maharaj and Srila Bhakti Pradhan Keshav Maharaj and their connection with Jagat Guru, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakura, Srila Prabhupada. So this relation, Gurudev explained that they were very close. He was close with Shripad Bhamaraj, but with Srila Tripakar Maharaj, there was an extra special bond. He said, we used to even sleep in the same bed. He trained me from the beginning. He taught me how to preach, he, how to play kartals, how to collect money, <laughs> so, so many things. And he also was like my protector. Sometimes I would get it in fear. I would get in trouble, but he would rescue me. And you all know that. Pastime once, Gurudev was responsible. They would go preaching in all the villages of Bengal. And Parm Gurudev, he would had one projector and he would show like a slide video show. And for India, this was something special. Now it would seem like it wasn't very much. You know, we have so much technology. But that back then it was the highlight of life, you know, to have something like this. Huh? That made myself fear. Yeah. Like, <laughs> So, Gurudev was responsible for carrying this from village to village. And one time, he got about halfway through, and he, he realized, oh, I had forgotten. And he, 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 you could tell he wasn't happy. And Sri, uh, Trevor Karmarsh saw, oh, what, what's wrong? He could sense some problem. And he said, well, I forgot. I, maybe I should run back. Because Gurudev's an expert runner. He could have run all the way back and then run again. Maybe he may have been in time. But Trevor Karmarsh told him, oh, don't worry. I'll take care, I'll take care. Mm -hmm. And it turned out when they got to the village and it was time to play, oh, Trevor Karma Maharaj said, oh, there's, oh, Gurudev Maharaj, there's some cloudy today, tonight. No, better not to show projector. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just give preaching and Gurudev was rescued. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> when they were on Parikram, Srila Trivikram Karmaraj described one, some of these quotes I'm giving now are by uh, something I read by one Brahmachari. Probably all know who he is. Begins with a P. Prem. <laughs> he told how uh, when they would go to Kamiva at Bhimalakun, that all the sannyasis, even the old ones, they would jump in and, you know, with and he would float on the water, and they said he would look like Anantashesh, and he would like look like a boat, <laughs> floating on the water. Maharaj, he would go in very quickly and come out. <laughs> and Srila Gurudev, he would jump in, and he would swim very quickly across to the other side, and then turn around and swim back very fast. And he would come out, then he said, Srila Vaman Raj looked and said, he goes, oh, in your last life, you were like a stallion. He said uh, to the true Trevor Maharaj, oh, you should speak here. You should speak here. And then Trevor Maharaj said, oh, this is not my place. <laughs> he said, this is your place. He said, you're always uh, more disposed to ladies. He says, my place is down below at the sockets. I will speak there. <laughs> they would <laughs> just tease and joke so much. And then Gurudev got um, Trevor Karmaraj at that time to uh, like sing a song. He, he started to sing a song. And in that song, he was uh, praying to Lord Krishna, to his lotus feet. And they said he sang it very slow, <clears throat> very like, you know, a little difficult to follow. But in that he was saying, oh Krishna, I'm begging for that mercy from your lotus feet, that you are the bestower of described that while, you know, he was singing like this, sometimes Gurudev would reach over and pinch him. <laughs> and then Srila Gurudev would take the mic and then Gurudev would begin to sing. And Gurudev would sing a song praying to Radha and Krishna, praying, praying for Radha Rani's mercy, for Krishna's mercy. And while Gurudev was singing, he would reverse in the line and he would say, oh, I am so troubled by my desire for material enjoyment, enjoyment. <laughs> he would grab the mic 
and he would say something, Gurdjieff would take it back and he'd begin his verse again and then Trivikram would do the same thing. It's described that the three of them would sit in a line. You've seen the pictures. They're sitting down to take prasad. And for Trivikram Raj, the boys, they would bring Sabji, right, Sabji? And they would bring him ghee, you know, and they would give him chili pepper. <laughs> put it on his, on his prasad, on his sabji. Gurudev would take, or like just boiled vegetables, very simple, no oil, very little salt. And then it's described, Srila Maharaj, he didn't care. <laughs> he just <laughs> took whatever they brought. But then Srila Maharaj, he would say to Gurudev, oh, you should take some of this ras. You cannot, how can you be strong? If you don't take some of this ras, how will you be in the you must have some. <laughs> he would take some of the sabji, you know, mixed with the ghee and the chili pepper and put it on Gurudev's plate. <laughs> and then Srila Gurudev would take some, and he'd say, taste, taste, you must taste it. It's so tasty. <laughs> Gurudev would take some, he'd put it, and he'd take some of his mouth, and he'd go, ah! <laughs> ah! This is so tamasic. <laughs> How can you take this? <laughs> And Chirakramar go, no, no, no. And I have to ask uh, Sri Patsidanti Maharaj. He described, he said, Gurudev used the word, oh, this is Kutuli. Kutuli. C U T U L I. Something Bengal. But he, he wasn't in favor. <laughs> this was Chirakramar was saying, this is so good. Gurudev was saying, it's so bad. So. These pastimes of them going, you know, on Parikram are so special. It's a gift that they have given to the world. Everyone has their specialities. And this was one great fortune that Srila Gurudev brought to us. We talked, Maharaj was speaking about, oh, what is the legacy? What is the contributions? What is the kata? It's unlimited. A variety of amazing things that Srila Gurudev gave to us. But this, this Parikram especially, Gurudev had told, I remember when we were on Parikram and we would go to places and he said, you can't imagine what it was like when we began, I've been doing now 50 years, he said, we literally had to cut through the jungle. We had machetes. To go to the, some of these places, we had to chop down bushes and make trails. But all these places were there and we went to all of them. And one time, uh, <clears throat> one of the lords of Sri Trivikramaraj, he uh, did something special for us. And Maharaj was telling also how he was giving such strong classes and who they even asked him an explanation. And one time, uh, Sri Pad Bhaktivedanta Madhav Maharaj, at that time when he did this, his name was Nubhini Krishna Brahmacharya. And he approached Srila Trivikram Maharaj and he asked him, he said, I have one question. He said, why are you always so contrary to my Gurudev? <laughs> why are you always being so difficult, <laughs> always challenging him? And he looked at him being Krishna Brahmachari and he said, I used to think you were very intelligent, but now I think you are a fool. <laughs> you don't know anything. He said, if you see like a beehive, big beehive, and you know, a few bees are you know, flying around. Uh, not so much is coming, maybe a few drops of honey. But if you take a stick and you poke that beehive, Oh, so much honey will flow. As Gurudev said, a stream, you know, Krishna's pastimes will flow in an unbroken stream. He said, so I'm poking your Gurudev, just like he, he would poke him during Harkata. And he said, now so much nectar is coming. Opposition. He's giving opposition. He's prodding. And so much nectar, so much juice is coming. We would never have heard these things if it wasn't for 
support of Shri Gurudev in every way. Shri Gurudev explained when he was traveling, when he came to the West, he got so much encouragement from Srila Trivikram Maharaj, so much encouragement from Srila Vangan Maharaj. But especially, he said, from Srila Trivikram Maharaj, he would write him, he would immediately write back from the West. And he always told him, well, you should write books. I said, you should preach, you should do all these things. Fully giving his support to Srila Gurudev. So Srila Gurudev came here to New Braj. We were so lucky, so fortunate that he came to this place, blessed this place, came 15 times in 1996 through 2010. He came every year except once. And he actually came in a different way that year. He called Srila Sri Giraj Govardhan to come here. He called all devotees to come here. He created a festival. Another devotee one other day was speaking how this is part of Gurudev's plan. Everywhere he went, he created festivals. He created temples. Everything. Gurudev gave us something everywhere. But especially in New Braj, we were very fortunate. Gurudev brought so much love and affection here, so much praying, so much harikata. He actually said um, in his speaking here, he said, I have never spoken this high. When I'm speaking here, anywhere else, except in Braj. And he said, and a little bit in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like to hear that so much, but he gave so much there also. But especially here, he introduced so much sweet, unprecedented Harikata. When Gurudev came in 2008 and 2009, we were expecting Sri Gurudev as every year. And that year he became some illness pastime and a decision was made that he would not come. And he went to Houston that year. And the devotees here were also sad, but we did get that opportunity. Practically the whole community went to Houston and got to see Shri Gurudev there. And on the last night, the devotees here from New Baraj, along with Hawaii devotees and all the friends and families, participated and made the most beautiful drama for Shiva Gurudev. And magically, that night, Shiva Gurudev in Houston gave electrifying Harikata, glorifying Sita and Ram, telling so many beautiful pastimes in such a heartfelt way, bringing tears to everyone. And then when he was finished, then it was time for drama play. And devotees came up, and most amazingly, they had prepared a drama of Ram and Krishna. And they performed that so beautifully. And Gurudev was so moved, tears were coming from his eyes, and he wiped in his cheeks, he was so happy. And the, the drama play was completely reflecting his Harikata. It was so incredible. Shiva Gurudev was so pleased. He blessed everyone for that. He was so happy. And previous to that, I had been speaking with Rajanath, but when all the devotees here, we were all praying, oh, Shiva Gurudev, please, you know, in our hearts we were praying, please, you must come to New Braj again. We were all thinking like this. But also we could see and know Shiva Gurudev's pastimes in this world and his traveling were reduced and there was no certainty that he may come but we put the word out especially I was speaking with Brajanath a little bit that night when Srila Gurudev returned to his room I was standing near his door and he walked by me and then he stopped and he turned around and he poked me in the chest and he said 
you want to put on a festival next year? I said, and I was surprised. I, I wasn't expecting this. I said, yes, Gurdjieff. Yes, we do. And he just looked at me and said, yes, I will come. And we were all like, wow. <laughs> we were all so flabbergasted and happy. We were not sure if this was possible, if Rude would travel and if he would come. But he promised to come. And in 2010, he came here. And it was his last festival here in New Brunch. But you should never, ever think in a short period. You should never ever think that Rudy is not here. He has invested so much of his Shakti into this place. Wherever a pure devotee goes, this becomes Vrindavan. The pure devotee carries Vrindavan with him. And just like uh, everywhere, everyone can remember just Rudy coming to the pavilion, walking up to the pavilion. Everybody coming, Gurudev, walking in, Gurudev sitting down, looking all around, you know, checking every face. There could be 500 people, but Gurudev would know who wasn't there. And he would look around, oh, you come up here and juggle everybody around, get them in the right position. And then Gurudev's guitar is having the bhajan sung. He's going on the morning walks every day. Hundred devotees going with Gurudev on this morning walk. Fifty cars lined up, and then coming back <clears throat> from from that morning walk, and then all the devotees and the ladies ready there, giving him flowers and Gurudev showering mercy on all of them. And then in the evening, walking back from the pavilion, how all devotees would come around and Gurudev just going so slowly, looking, giving everybody. A, a beautiful sidelong glance, some sweet words. Coming in the morning here to see Takerji. Unlimited, it's not just a few. You know, the past time, the Gurudev's time here, in the garage, stopping every day at the bookstall coming back, looking at the books, praising the booksellers, and also reminding them, oh, tomorrow, <laughs> I want this table to be empty. <laughs> All books distributed. So, like a generator, we have material generators, and they give power. But they're short-term, you have to give them gas, propane, whatever. But Gurudev has brought, and he's put a generator here. He's brought the whole parampara, he's brought everything. And in that generator, it's got a conduit, it's connected to the spiritual realm. And he's filled that generator with love and affection. And he's distributing that to us. So, feeling very, very happy to be here in the association of so many wonderful devotees that have gotten through the Gurudev's mercy. And I'm praying you'll give me a drop, bless me, to be here and Serve Srila Gurudev, serve Srila Prabhupada, and our whole group in the group, Varda. Thank you. 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 
Okay, um, I'm going to talk to you about something that uh, is in Shula Gurudev's hands, both hands, and um, it's called the Saturn line. Now, this finger is the Saturn finger, and there's a line that goes directly up to the Saturn finger, so it's called the Saturn line. And it's not in everybody's hand, it's usually broken up, it's usually... Uh, very soft looking, uh, but we're going to talk about what's in Gurudev's hands. Um, it's called, the name of this chapter is called the Saturn Line Trident. So when I'm talking about a trident, it's not a trident like a trident like this, but it's directly a trident that goes like this. Uh, one of the most exceptional markings on Guru, and if you look at Guru Dave's hands when he's holding his hands in benediction mode, you will see this. One of the most exceptional markings on Guru Dave's palms is the centermost vertical crease, the root chakra line, or the Saturn line. So it starts here and goes right up to the finger in its textbook description. The presence of a relatively sturdy root engraving indicates the resourcefulness to concretely achieve one's goals. It's called the root chakra because its appearance is the assurance that the bearer has the patience, motivation, and tenacity to concretely achieve their ambitions. So this is the first chakra. Consequently, a poorly built, lightly etched, or even non-existent crease evidences the antithesis of this. Varying degrees of a wanting in determination and ambition, include, including laziness or a victim or a victimhood. The architecture of his lines is almost identical in both hands. This is amazing in itself. Hmm. Which, is, which in palmistic tradition further intensifies the capability and significance sometimes referred to as the line of destiny it travels an upraised course toward the finger of Saturn and it is this line uh, that hand readers use the most to date events <laughs> Uh, the god of Saturn is the lord of time. In both of Gurudev's palms, the crease becomes especially distinct at 25 years, the age of his full conversion to his master's mission. The sole difference between the two is that Gurudev's right hand impression, or the outer world hand, begins a gentle curve from the mountain of the moon. The moon is here. The specific lunar or moon locality from where it commences it archives the enlarged public arena, evidencing that one's career activities will meet with public support and attention. Anyone who is in any way famous such as actors, artists, writers, etc., will bear this root chakra genesis point. Owing to its function as a measure of one's strength of purpose, it's no surprise that in this day and age, the root chakra, or the Saturn line, is often found in poor condition, in other words, broken up, messy, indistinct, or weakly etched. On Gurudev's palms, the entire construction is clear and forthright. It's just so deep and rich and dark. It's unbelievable. It's unmistakable. You can't miss it. Um, and as hand readers like to see, as it bodes a consistent and growing ascendancy, it gradually becomes deeper and richer as it makes its way towards the fingers. All in all, a beautiful piece. 
Sometimes in its journey, the root can veer over to the Jupiter or Sun region. This is the Jupiter finger, this is the Sun finger. Uh, it's, it's consummate des destinations, however, are the environs of Saturn. This is because there is a mutual resonance between the root chakra and, and the planet Saturn, as they both attend to affairs of industriousness and manifestation. Taking this into account, any palmist worth his or her salt would be quite impressed, naturally concluding that this personality has been decidedly successful and prodigious. For all that, we now come to the aspect of this line which marks its absolutely super, per, superlativeness. Bringing your eyes to the very center of the Mount of Saturn, and that's right here. This is the center of the mountain of Saturn, right below the finger. So if you look at your Dave's hands, you're gonna see what we're gonna talk about now. Uh, Bringing your eyes to the very center of the Mount of Saturn, you will notice that this root chakra is most gracefully crowned by that most auspicious of symbols, the hauntingly rare, this is what Palmas call it, the trident of Elhaz. Elhaz is the chief insignia of protection. In the arsenal of occultic palmistry, Elhaz acts as a cosmic shield from disturbances and obstacles during one's undertakings. In other words, this is a very rare sign. <laughs> Further, it denotes that one's enemies cannot do any harm. Having said this, there is some, is there some accrual purpose? One bearing the mark of this trident is destined to initiate some form of divine plan in which, quote, Guidance is channeled directly from the heavens. It is the emblem found on those great teachers who possess the power to transfer their students a maturation of inner gravity through the listening process. And this was written by Eldred Thorson, who's a, a great Paulist. Like, and like its identical and equally mighty runic symbol, or Elhaz, the trident bestows a celestial shield of protection from all opposing forces for oneself and those who follow them. This is really important. So we were all protected because we were following him. When, when a trident resides, and first of all, I have to say that the trident seen in the hand is a very rare sign, one of the most amazing and auspicious signs in and of itself. So to be on top of this uh, line of Saturn is just unbelievable. When a trident resides upon the Mount of Saturn, it combines the most distinguished virtues of its own zodiacal signs, Capricorn, Virgo, and Taurus. In classical chiromancy, that's palmistry, occultic palmistry, a trident is a generating power plant which, with its three outstretched antennas it gathers the most distilled planetary currents, consolidates them into its axis, and further intensifies the strength of the attached chakra, combining the core essence of the three finger segments. The deepest hermetic import of the planet is revealed, as we shall see. So Capricorn on one side reveals the teacher, the mentor, the role model, and the educator. What it has to do with Guru Dev's appearance thing? Will you, what it has to do with what? Guru Dev's glories. Well, this is unprecedented. This is. We already know he's from Golabrinda. Okay. <laughs> so any sign, any mark doesn't matter. Okay. All right. I you speak some of the memories you have with Guru Dev. All right. We can hear this some other time. Uh, but today is a very special day. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, and I, you were just talking about the last 2010. Uh, the last, the last time I actually spoke to Guru Dev at length was in his room in 2010, and it was in the morning. And uh, he asked me, 
how many times have I come to Badger? And I told him, and we were talking about that. And then um, later, years later, I realized how important that statement was. In other words, why did he ask me how many times I've come to Badger? Because he wanted me to realize how much hard work and effort and struggle he's gone through all these years. That was my realization to preach to all, to me and all of us. So that was my, that was my realization. And that realization is the importance of the So that's what I have to say. <laughs> During the Ram Nomi, appearance of Lord Ram, he used to speak from Ramayan. <clears throat> and Gurudev told, Ravan was so powerful, descendant of Kulast Rishi, born Brahmin, demon in nature. And he was so powerful that he controlled all demigods in his palace. Not only that, the nine planets, the nine planets was working under the direction of Ravan. He used to tell Saturn, you come here, sit here. <laughs> Jupiter should be there. Venus, go there. He used to order those planets. Imagine how powerful Ravan was. But because even though he read all the Vedas, he didn't understand the meaning of the Vedas. Gurudev said, even if the powerful person like Raman, who knows Vedas, but he didn't follow Vedas, if he would have followed the Vedas, he can understand Ram is not ordinary personality. He always took Ram as ordinary human being. What is the difference? So as we have commentaries on Srimad Bhagavatam, there's commentaries on Ramayana also by great Acharyas. There are ten versions of Ramayana with so many great devotees, pure devotees of Ram. Gurudev said, Ravan, or there's one story, where the wife of Ravan, Mandodri, very chaste, very chaste, you know, when we do a wedding ceremony from this book, or some star book, we have to utter some divine chaste couples you know, to tie a bond with the bride and groom. And there we, when we recite the mantra, this mantra comes with Mandodri and Ravan. She was very chaste, Mandodri. She said, I want to see Ram. Rama said, how dare you can go and see my enemy? She said, but I want to see. What is that? That everyone is glorifying him and your brother Vibhishan left you for him. I want to see. So Ram was sitting. She Ram was sitting and Mandotri came from the back. And Ram only saw what? The shadow of Mandotri. Just the shadow. The moment Raman saw a shed of a woman, immediately he, restless, he woke up and paid over senses to the shadow and said, Mother, who are you? And Mother was so much impressed. Some dialogue happened, took place. She came back and she, what she saw, told to Raman. Raman said, What is there in Ram? I have everything. I am beautiful. I have op op opulence, I have strength, I control all the nine planets. She said, there is a difference. And the difference is, just by seeing a figure of a woman, Ram addressed the shadow as a mother of his one-pointed devotion, his one-pointedness towards his wife. Seeing shadow of any woman addressing his mother. And you, Ravan? 
I'm your wife, but you're lusting for some others, other men women. That's the difference. Your mind is not under your control. You have controlled the whole universe, but your mind is not in your control. You are submissive, you are servant to your mind. So Gurudev said, if we see many people, in general, people in India, they say, oh, everyone who comes to this material planet, they go through their karmic directions, even if Ram or Pandas, they say like that. But excuse me, they are from spiritual world, they are the parikars, they are associates. They are not going through any karmic reactions. What's happening with them? It's just past, past times. They are put in that situation to show to the entire world the glories of the Pandas, the glories of Ram. Especially their Sri Ram is, he wants to relish this Vipralambha, the mood of separation. So this unfavorable situation is seen in them is just for relishing something. Vipralambha. Pandas have to go through the forest so many years. It's not about karmic reactions. It's because Ram has put, sorry, Krishna has put them in that situation. Because they are purifying all those places where they are going. So there is some purpose. So, Acharyas like Srila Gurudev, Srila Prabhupada and many other Acharyas. If we try to of course, they are divine personalities, but if you try to see their astrological calculation, that's something which is material. <laughs> Srila Bhakti Siddhan Prabhupada, he rejected that head of the department, astrological department of in India. He rejected that seat. I am not here to count the stars or the moments of constellation, constellations. I am not here for this purpose. I am here to give something very important which this world doesn't have. What Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Sosri Thakur wanted to give? Srila Gurudev took that legacy of Srila Prabhupada and he gave to this world. So even though his stars are favorable or unfavorable, it <coughs> doesn't matter. They are equal in all circumstances. They never give up the service of the Gurudev. Whatever difficulties they come across, doesn't affect their surrender mood. This is how they are showing with their own examples. Because they are not from this world, they are from transcendental, they are from the goal of Vrindavan. So all these things doesn't affect them. Even if it is favorable or not favorable, it doesn't matter to them. They never give up Gurudev, never give up. Srila Prabhupada never give up any service to the Guru Maharaj, to the Guru Parampara, whatever the circumstances were. You know, I heard some past times, Srila Bhaktivedan Swami Prabhupada, especially that video when the movie came out, Hare Krishna movie, how Srila Prabhupada, he was taking shelter in one house and the person who was drunk, he came drunk, he came back, his his home and he kicked. Even is so offensive to even say this. In the middle of night, Shri Prabhupada has to leave his house because he was kicking him, abusing him so much. Mm. Is it favorable circumstance? What can be more offensive than that? But Did he ever stop teaching? Did he stop his compassion? No. If Nityam Prabhu can get this hit on his forehead by Jagan Madaik, did Nityam Prabhu took any offense or kill them? Mere si kal si mata tai bole ki prem devo na ki. That's a verse. Oh, you hit me on my forehead. Just because of that, I will not give you frame. That's not the case. Then what is the mercy? What is the compassion about? Patra apatra vicharam na kurute na cha param vikshate. Shri Prabhupada Sri Thakur is writing this. In glorification of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, 
without considering you are qualified and you are not qualified. Mahaprabhu equally give praying to everyone. Nitya Prabhu didn't took any revenge. Oh, you, you know who I am? Who I am? Nitya Nanda. The creation happens because of me. For Nitya Prabhu give praying. So all of our acharyas, even Shri Gurudev, they all go through all this, but that's not because of their astrological chart. These are pastimes to show their compassion and mercy, how much, how tolerant they are. They are totally immersed in that mood of compassion. Mood of compassion. Krishna is very calculated. Krishna said, Ye yatha maam prabhadante, taam sate bhajam meham. You worship in whatever degree I just propagate proportionately. In Bhagavatam, first canto says, Mukti dadatit kaharchit samana mukti yoga. A kamu saru kamu va moksh kamu dhani. I fulfill all desires. If you want liberation, I can give you liberation. If you want any perfections, I can give you perfections. But Bhakti Dharatit Kharchis Samana Bhakti Yoga. He don't give his bhakti so easy. He don't give that prema so easy. He's very calculated. But he's the one who fulfills everyone's desires. Akamu Sarakamuva Moksh Kamudharihi Tivrena Bhakti Yogana Yajati Purshaparam. You come with desire, you come without any desire, and you come with the desire of liberation, he fulfills all human desire. But that's one aspect. The other aspect, you see, Ama Bhaje Mage Vishe Sukh, Amri Chhada Vishe Mage E Bada Mur, Ami Vigya Se Murk Vishe Geno Devo, Such a Namrit Diya Vishe Bhulai Bhu. Chitam Chitam. Krishna is saying, Oh, you worshipping me. Now, this is for devotees. What I said earlier is for general people. Oh, I fulfill all your desires. You come for mukti, I'll give you mukti. You come for perfection, I'll give you perfection. Whatever you want. But when it comes to the devotees, that's not passionate. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, Samoham sarvoteshu name doshti asti name priya. I'm equal to everyone. No friend to anyone, no enemies to anyone. But je bhajan tu maam bhaktaya. But one who worship me, I'm inclined to them. That's obvious. That's natural. I'm inclined to worship. So for the devotee section, what Krishna is saying, Ama bhaje, you worshipping me, and what are you asking for? Sense gratification? Amri chhada vishe maago e bada murk. You are very foolish. Instead of asking for nectar, nectar means service of my divine lotus feet. Krishna is saying. Instead of that, you are asking sense gratification. You are foolish. Just like Duryodhana, he wants army. He don't want Krishna. But Arjun wants Krishna. He was, he was scared. What if Duryodhana will ask Krishna? And Duryodhana is happy with the army of Krishna. The same is our condition, you know. We disciples, we also have some kind of Duryodhan Tattva in us. <laughs> we also have Eklavya Tattva in us. Taking advantage of Sri Gurudev. As Eklavya took advantage Hidingly, he learned everything from Donachari. But why want to become famous and envious towards Arjun? And connecting my name with some big Acharya because then I'll get glorified. Oh, he's disciple of so and so. Oh, he's disciple of Bhakti Siddhan Prabhupada. Taking advantage of 
the name of Guru. That's Eklavya Tattva. And Duryodhan Tattva. It is there in some proportion. These are not idol shishyas, disciples. No. To some extent, some proportion it is present. If we dig, if we scratch, we find. Yes. But we are keeping, I am keeping this hiding in my heart. Because I don't want to tell otherwise I'll get blamed. But if I dig my heart, if I scratch, I find yes, some Eklavya is present there also. Some Duryodhan. Duryodhan made Balram Prabhu as his guru. Can you imagine? Bhagdev Prabhu. Did ever, even one day or one second, Duryodhan said, I know I'm very stupid. I know I'm very fallen. But oh, my Guru Dev Bhagdev Prabhu, can you shower your compassion on me and can give Krishna to me? Imagine if one day he would have said that. What Balde Prabhu could have not given to him? Immediately it empowered him in all mercy, compassion and made Krishna his worshipping God. But Duryodhan didn't want it Krishna. He wanted kingdom. He wanted all material things. That's Duryodhan Tattva. He could have attained everything from Balde Prabhu being disciple. But you only want to learn the art of fight from Baldito. That's all. So stupid. <laughs> Similarly, we got, we received such high class acharyas. Their association, their Hari Katha. I received association of so many acharyas. But I'm still Duryodhan. I could have asked Prema Bhakti, but I'm bereft. When they were distributing Prema Bhakti, I was just watching them. Mm -hmm. And I wanted all my material desires to get fulfilled. I want to get famous. I want to learn Shastras. I want to do this, I want to do that. But if I would have asked one day, Gurudev, can you shower a Prema Bhakti? Just by Humbly seeing my sincere prayer, he could have given me prema bhakti. What is that which he cannot give? He can give that. That's why Ekalamya Tattva is also there and Duryodhan Tattva is also there. That's why. But they are so tolerant. Can you imagine how tolerant is Gurudev? We sometimes, in jokingly, we take them as, an, as our friend. Is an ordinary person. Can you imagine? From that level, he comes to our level. Rupa Goswami. We can understand the glories of Rupa Goswami being the direct form of Radharani and Mahaprabhu. But to make us understand what is the meaning of unconditional love, you see what he is writing? From that level, they have to come so slow level to make us understand. Shiru Goswami Pad is writing, Yukti na yatha yuno, yuno ta yukti yatha. See what he is saying. As a young girl get attracted to see a young boy, and a young boy get attracted to see a young girl, Oh Lord, when will I get attracted towards you unconditionally? No condition, unconditional. When there is a attraction between young ones, there is no condition there. It's just spontaneous. When will I develop that spontaneous love for you? Rupa Swami is teaching us how we have to pray to Krishna. So can you imagine from that level he comes to mm -hmm. our level so that we can understand we know this language easy. Mm -hmm. So Guru Dev, who came from such high level and want to give such high thing. What high thing? Radhara Mahima Prem Ras Seema Jagat Janato Ki Radhara Mahima The glories of Radharani Prem Ras Seema High 
highest limit of that prema. Madanakya Mahabhav. For which Krishna also begged to Radharani to get that. He also longing to get that. He wants to give this. Such high thing. So, whatever comes in their preaching, whatever, oppositions, whatever, it's not because of the karmas. That's the beauty of their pastime. Because they want to show, even you are opposing me, my heart is brought open for giving my compassion to you. That's why Krishna put them in difficult situation to show to the entire world how merciful are my devotees. Like Krishna is always ready to help his devotees, right? Two examples. I'm not going to elaborate because everyone is very learned here. Draupati getting disrobed in the assembly, Krishna came immediately to help her. Yes, immediately. Without any delay. Duryodhan, uh, sorry, Gajendra, the elephant, immediately Krishna came. The Lord came to help him. Immediately, without any delay. Then why was the delay with Prahlad then? Then he was getting so much problems by his own father. Why was the delay there? For Draupati, oh, we can say, Prabhu, you are very partial. For Draupati, you came immediately. For Gajendra, you came immediately. Why not for Prahlad? <coughs> Intentionally, I came late. Intentionally, because I want to Kill Hiranyakashipu the very first day when he ordered the kill my son Pranav. I would have torn him apart. How dare he can even say this? <coughs> but I was tolerating, tolerating and tolerating because I want to make you famous Pranav. Just for you. I want to show the, the strength of my bhakti and the strength of my devotee. How would have been possible if I could have come the very first day to kill Hiranyakashipu? So I was tolerating this, tolerating this because I want to show the entire world the glories of my devotees. When any acharyas like Srila Prabhupada, Srila Gurudev, they getting any opposition? Or just we heard the person was kicking him? And how Nityam Prabhu got hit on his forehead? What they want to express? What is the plan of Krishna? To show the glories of my devotees, how tolerant they are, how compassionate they are. Even then, they are ready to embrace. Srila Haridas Thakur got beaten in 22 marketplace. How is possible for any, any person to even touch the associate <coughs> of the Lord? What to speak of abusing? Hitting him? But that's spread the glories of the devotee. And the compassion of Haridas Thakur, please, Prabhu, don't take any offense. They don't know what they are doing. This is what they want to express. So they're not going through any kind of material star movements, constellation movements. <coughs> All these unfavorable circumstances in their life is showing, expressing their compassion. And there's so much mood of delivering everyone. Delivering means not just delivering from material world, that's not. But giving them something high. The role of our Gaudiya Acharyas, I would say Gaudiya Acharyas, and Gurudev is prominent amongst them. Srila Prabhupada is prominent amongst them. Our Guru Maharaj, all respected Gurudev's prominent Gaudiya Acharyas. Their mission is not to establish centers. Their mission is not to make thousands of disciples. Their mission is to make temple in the heart of the disciple. Where Sri Radha Gobind Dev get worship. That was the mission. To make one feel proud that I am here in this lineage, Sri Gaudi Vishnu. And my aim and object is to become the maid servant of Radha. That's the only and only mission. Of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Swasti Thakur Prabhupada made 64 centers. Not to show that I am Acharya and I want to make so many centers. Acharya is not to just make centers. 
They are not just to make disciples. They want to make temple and centers in the heart of the disciples. Therefore, for that, how much dedication is required? How much dedication, how much love and attachment is required for one's Gurudev? And it all comes with taking responsibility to serve as Srila Gurudev took this responsibility so sincerely he served his Guru Maharaj Shri Bhakti Pradhyan Krishna Goswami Maharaj and by saying serving him means he is serving the entire Guru Parampara. The mission I said earlier, the mission why Krishna came in this world, the Mahaprabhu came in this world, the Srila Bhakti Thakur and Rupa Goswami. Srila Gurudev such a wonderful Acharya. He hold this legacy of, of entire Guru Parampara to give what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to give. You see, that is, this is not ordinary personality. With not ordinary just to establish centers. No. He wanted to give the Radha Dasyam. You don't know how much we all can understand this gravity of Srila Gurudev's contribution. But one day when we realize this, then we can't stop our tears. We can't stop our heart to get melt. Because to re we are only hearing this. I'm also hearing this. I'm speaking this. The moment, the day when we will realize this, oh, we will say, Gurudev, Kandiya Kandiya Prana Rakhi Pohar. I will not keep my life without you. I'm dying without you. I'm dying without you. What you have given to me, Kripa Bintu Diya. Koro He Dase Trinapi Kapiti. What have you given this? I was in the streets, such a degraded situation. You took me from those streets and you made me Vaishnav and Vaishnavi. And not only that, you giving that seed, planting the seed in the heart. My question is, is disciples Sarad Guru Dev or Guru serve disciples? <laughs> parents serve children or children serve parents? It looks like appears that we disciples, we serve our Guru Dev. What is the other way around? It's Guru who serves disciples. How? First of all, by giving birth of bhakti in the heart. I mean, bhakti is already there in dormant state. But by giving mantras, by giving initiation, he is inspiring that bhakti lata beej. Guru Krishna Prashade Pai, bhakti lata beej. He is planting that seed of that vasna, the service mood, the attitude in the heart of disciple. The seed is there, but he is just evoking that. And then by Giving Hari Katha is giving the direction of that free body. Which direction you have to go? Oh, don't follow the direction of Vaikuntha. Don't follow the direction of Ayodhya. Make that creeper state. Just go. And the end point is Mali Haya Kare Se Bijaropan Shavan Kirtan Jale Kare Sinchan. Disciple, a sadhaka himself, and Gurudev also with shavan and kirtan, hearing and chanting, is nourishing that seed in the heart. That creeper goes straight, and then he takes the weed out, the, all those weeds out, so that the creeper can get all the nourishment, the sunlight, water, air, whatever. So make that creeper straight, going direct to Golok Vrindavan, and ends up here. Yeah. Radha Rani, the lotus feet of Sri Radha Rani. And he's tolerating so much of our nonsense. So much anarthas. He's cutting those feet, the knots. So, is he enjoying our services? When we massage him or whatever services we have done or were doing for him, he was serving us. Because he wants to see his disciple to achieve that domain, the Ryan, where everything is pure. Who can be more merciful than Shri Guru? Who can be merciful? So that's, this is not.